Today I'm going to be checking out this battery. I was sent it at no cost so I can do this review. Let's go ahead, take this thing out of the box, see everything that it comes with, and then do a good load test on this. So now that I got the battery out of the box, this is everything it comes with. It comes with this nylon carrying handle. And I like these kind of handles, honestly, because they just come off really easy. So once you get this, you know, put in wherever you're going to use it, you can easily just pull this off. And if you need to put it back on, you can put it on. So it also comes with these little plastic pieces here that go over the lugs when it's being shipped. That's to keep it from accidentally discharging. It comes with the lug bolts that you need to put down here for the terminals. And it's got these little plastic covers, again, you know, to help you from accidentally discharging this battery. I really like it when they send those. Now, this one is a smart battery. It's got this LCD here on top. And it's got an application, an app that you can put on your phone to monitor this battery. It just basically gives you all the stats of the battery, details of its charge state and its discharging and temperatures and so forth. It does have low temp cutoff protection, but this one also has a self heating function. Now that's when it's charging. And if you refer to the manual, it talks about how the heating function works. So this self heating function works when you're charging the battery. If the battery is too low of a temperature, it will turn on the self heating and it will heat inside of the battery to bring it up to temperature to charge that will use some of the power when it is being charged. Now, when it reaches, it says 41 degrees, it will then turn that feature off and then use that power that it was using for the heating element into the battery. So it just charges it faster from your charger. If it's solar or you're using a charger or whatever, but that's pretty cool because a lot of them, you know, you just, the BMS is just gonna turn it off and say you can't charge it, it's too cold. This one will actually try to heat the battery and if it can heat it to the appropriate temperature it will start charging and then once it's heated up it'll turn off. So that is a very cool feature to have especially if you're in colder climates because you know you get in the winter time and your batteries get out there or if they're not sheltered they get so cold where you really can't use them because you know they shouldn't be charging right if you charge them too cold they they mess up the batteries. It also has this LCD display that's on the top here. Now I am going to charge this battery up 100%, but for now I'm just going to check it out. It is showing a voltage of 13.32, 74% standby. I mean, this has really got some good information here. Wow. And it is touchscreen. So that's pretty cool. It just goes through everything on the battery. So that's enough about the features. I'm going to go ahead and charge this battery up 100%, and then we're going to put a load on it and see how many watt hours we get. All right, so this is a little bit about what I got going on here. This is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I have it connected to this battery and this connection is going through a shunt which goes to this battery monitor here. So this little monitor here, when I clamp it onto the positive terminal is going to monitor the power coming out of this battery. The inverter is then going to power a portable air conditioner that I typically use to put a load on a battery of this size. It will probably put 50 to 60 amps of a load against this battery using this inverter. Now it's an AC unit, so it will turn off and turn on. To me, it gives more of a real world scenario on what you would be doing with one of these batteries than just putting you know, 10 amp load on a little device that just slowly pulls power out. I wanna know how well this thing's gonna work in a boat or in my RV or in my home if I'm using it with solar. So I'm gonna put it against something that I would consider more of a real world load. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook the air conditioner up to the inverter, I'm gonna plug it in there, I'm gonna get the battery monitor turned on, and we're gonna get this thing load tested. Now it does have a BMS with Bluetooth, so I'm also gonna be monitoring that from my phone. There's an app that I downloaded, connected, it was no problem connecting to this, but it's going to allow me to see what it thinks it has left as a battery compared to what we've pulled out and hopefully, you know, they'll be pretty close. All right, so I've got the power hooked up for this. This is now reading it. It's getting 13.6 volts is what it's saying this battery has. And I've got the AC, the air conditioner plugged into this 2000 watt inverter. So let's do it. Just turn the inverter on.
So I don't know if we called it on here or not. I'll have to review the footage, but the AC unit compressor did kick on. This spiked up and now we're actively running with the compressor on. So as you can see here, it's at about 35 amps load, but this over time will get up to around 600 watts or so, which will be closer to 50 amps. So I'm going to let this just run and we're going to see how much we get out of this battery. I'm going to keep an eye on the BMS using the application on my phone and before it cuts out, we'll come and see how everything is doing. All right, so it's a little noisy in here right now. I got the portable AC running and the fan on this inverter is kicked on and that's because, you know, it's over 20% or whatever it is using it so it automatically kicks on like this but the app said it was around 22% something like that left in the battery so I want to come and check it and sure enough we're at 79.4 amp hours we're over one kilowatt hour and things are still looking pretty good so I'm expecting this to get to right about 100 amp hours based upon the app and based upon how this thing is functioning so it's doing really well it dropped back down, the AC compressor turned off, but before that it was using around 55, 50 to 55 amps. So it's kicking on and off. But yeah, so far so good. It looks like it's doing well. The load test is going good and we're going to just keep going until this thing gets close to the end. So I came in here because the app said the battery is now down to 0% and as you can see here it's getting pretty low. Let's see, we just have the fan running right now on the AC so the compressor hasn't kicked on. I'm assuming at this voltage when the compressor kicks on that it's just not going to work and the voltage is going to drop and this is going to turn it down. So this inverter, I think it's 10.8 volts, something like that, this inverter will turn off. And if the BMS detects the battery voltage is too low, then the BMS will turn it off. So to know the difference, this, if it goes blank, the battery turned it off. If the AC turns off and this still has power, then the inverter turned it off. So right now though, we're already at 101 amp hours, 1.27 kilowatt hours. So I definitely think that it's satisfied the capacity portion and I looked at the app and like I said, even though the app said 0%, the app still functions and everything is readable and all the specs are there. But I do believe this is pretty much the end of the battery. So if you had a setup where you were using and uh, charging and discharging your batteries quite often, like let's say in an RV or in a home, then you probably would want to cut off at, I don't know, 11 or maybe 11.5. I'm not exactly sure on how you would want to cut it off but personally i would probably cut it off at like 11.5 but that's just me so i'm going to go ahead and let this run for just a little bit i want to see if that compressor will kick on one more time and see how this reacts and there it went it tried to do it and it just couldn't do it i'm going to turn that off i don't want to hear the beeping anymore so it tried to kick the compressor on the battery just didn't have the power in it anymore to provide that much load to the compressor to get it started so this is what i would consider its stopping point it almost hit 1.28 kilowatt hours which would be 100 amp hours at 12.8 volts but it did go over 100 amp hours so this is actually the real number kilowatt hours or, or watt hours because this actually is measuring the power capacity or the amount of power used versus how many amp hours at what voltage, right? So it's right there. It was pretty much spot on. Probably had just a little bit more left in it before the BMS kicked it out. So yeah, I would definitely say that this battery lived up to what it says. Then you've also got the fact that it's a smart battery and it's got this nice LCD screen here. The LCD screen on the top basically gives you all the information about this just like the app would but you have it available on the top of the battery and then the other cool thing that I haven't really seen in a battery in this category 
is the self-heating. So it's got a heating element inside of this battery. So if you like this type of video, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing some more of these as I get these types of batteries. I basically want to find out, you know, is this battery providing the specs and everything that it said it would? And are you getting your money's worth when you get one of these? And I think you are on this one. But hit that thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel because I'll have quite a few more of these videos coming as I get these kind of batteries. And then also I'm going to be setting up an entire solar system in my RV using all of the different batteries that I have had either sent to me or have I purchased. And we'll see how big of a battery bank I can get. And I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.